This time on Fox and Fix It, we're going to fix this. All right, so this is a 2008 Impala. You can tell by the Morse code it's tapping out for its age and problems it's currently having and ripple down the side. You just don't get that with the earlier ones. The window doesn't go up and down. That's a new tapping. Maybe that's like a I'm getting closer kind of sound. Sure, why not? What we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop all the clips on this door, probably have to take a couple screws out somewhere in here. And I'm getting there. Shh. I cannot find my plasticky trim PC takey offy stuff. So I'm gonna use a regular pry bar and some frog tape or some 3M tape. Just something to keep it from scratching the paint. Not that this is some sort of show car, but you know, I don't want to hurt it any more than it already is. It's had a rough life. Okie dokie, that should work. Yep, that'll be fine. Oh, T30, the doors are T30s. Pop this tiny little cover off. There we go. That's cover on the inside of the door handle. That is also a T30, it appears to be. There we go. Um, there does not appear to be any other screws, so let's get to popping some panels here. Your own actual plastic door clippy tool set, because you don't want to be using pry bars if you don't have to. Oh, there we go. It's another one. Probably not broken, but maybe it is. Who knows? I don't know. We'll get there. This feels more like there's a screw behind this reflector. And there is. Okay. So behind this little door reflector, there is what appears to be about an 8 millimeter bolt. Sure, don't make another Torx. I'll get more tools. I said 8. It's a 7 millimeter. Leave it to GM to make, out of four bolts, they couldn't make all four of them the same fastener. Why they got to be different? We're going to pull that off, I think. There you go. Now it should lift off and straight out of the way. There we go. It's GM's standard little, you know, basket handle clippy thingy. There we go. Ah, it's got a metal tang at the bottom. It just sort of goes over the lip of this. Nailed it. I actually need to plug this door switch in so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so what I did is I disconnected all of this so I can plug this back in so that we can mess with it. There we go. It appears to be on the track, I think. That's not the problem. I hate to do this, but we're gonna have to take the glass out if I wanna to get to that motor and find out what's going on. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this couple bolts right here at the bottom clamping this window in place don't break now just be nice be nice be nice there we go these all just slide don't they yeah except maybe this one well that looks important yeah, okay. Bottom of the glass, um, a tassy thingy is cable-y, drawn-y, driven-y thingy. And I think one of the cables is out. That's probably the problem. But we gotta get there to get there. Okay, so we've got two that I should have just loosened and not removed. One, two, three that I can loosen and not remove. And then this very bottom left one is definitely a remove. It does not have this big slot to slide a bolt out. So, that's those. And then this whole mechanism -y thing should come out. Allegedly, oh, look at that. Okay. And here's our thing. Okay. So, Here's the problem, is this is cable operated, 
and it has these two ends, one here, and it has the other end is obviously over here, and they attach up to the glass like this, and you push the switch one way, and these are supposed to slide this way as the motor goes, and you push the switch the other way, and it goes this way. Well, this top one is detached, and it feels like the cable's bound up inside here. I can hear the motor working, so I don't think it's... I don't think it's motor related. I think the cable's bound up. So what we're gonna do is try to take this apart and get that cable unbound. It's an eight. Oh, I'm probably making a massive mistake by taking this apart, but what are you gonna do? There we go. Hey oh. Well, the problem is not the gears. Those gears look to be fine. Now the problem is inside here. There we go. All right. Metal cover is off. And there you go. There's the problem. So if you can't tell, this isn't supposed to have a knot in it. Good thing is, this is off a of Chevy Impala. Chevy Impalas are fleet vehicles, cop cars, taxis, everything. So readily available. Readily available usually means cheap. This entire assembly, so the slidey slidey piece with the actual window mounty PC that I took off earlier. Uh, and... This assembly, which, by the way, just to, this is the window motor. The regulator is this, this whole, this regulates. Just like, uh, think like a rheostat, like you can turn the temperature up or down. Same thing, you're turning the window up or down. This is regulator, this is the motor. So, readily available and cheap, in stock, all of this together, boop, 85 bucks. Garbage. There's a new one. We're just going to make sure it matches. Okay. We are ready to put this thing back together. When I took this apart, I didn't do the best job of explaining how all this works because I was getting it apart and I wanted to see if it was even repairable or at least take a partable. Take, take a partable? Dis, disassemblable. Dis, it's... If I could get it apart. I can't think of the word right now. I'm tired. It's fine. So to go back together, we're going to do a little bit better job explaining it. This is the way it sits in the door. These two bolts at the bottom are your bottom mounts. This one is here. And these three, one, two, three, goes just like that. Inside the door, plug in down there. And then what you do is your glass then bolts to these two. started. If we get this motor bolted up first, probably be a good idea. Make sure all this lines up. And I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, this is the same thing, just different. There we go. Those are hanging there. Oh, that one started. That's the only one that really has to come out if you're just R&R &R in this. Is this bottom one? There's no slot. All the others have the giant holes here. One, two, three, four, five total, and they're all 10 millimeter. The glass is not in there, so we can use this. Uh, to recap, I did that backwards. Uh, I should have plugged it in first, then tightened these. That way, I don't get the wires up in the wrong place, and then I can't plug it in at all. Note to future self. Plugged in, tight, 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 tight. We're ready for the glass. What you want to do with the window is you want to get the front edge of the window down in first at an angle because the track ends here. So you can actually dip it down in and you've got room in front of the door to shove it this way so you can get the back half into the channel, then slide this up and into the channel. Uh, that's the really only way that this is going to fit back in. I mean, it's glass. It's just nerve-wracking to mess with glass in the first place. Because the last thing you want to do is break it. See how it sort of slid and now I'm rotating it? There we go. Let's rotate into that back track. And 
into the front here. We should be good. Now it's not attached to anything, so you don't want to just let the glass go because it'll fall straight down. So at the bottom of the window, I've now got it set onto the brackets on both sides. I can put these bolts in. Then we'll plug the motor in and try to operate it and make sure that it works before we do anything else. You don't need a lot of torque on this. You just need it like that. I don't know. 25 foot pounds, 20 maybe tops, I would think. All right, as you can hear by the unhappy noises that this car is making, giving me Morse code signals, it says, wait a minute, dash dot dot dash. Yeah, it is signaling me that it is ready to go. And, oh, weird noise. Nope, windows all the way up. Okay. It's in the track, top, bottom, front. We're good there. Does auto function work? Auto down. This does not have auto up, which is fine. It's fixed. Okay. Now the only thing left to do is reassemble this door and quit listening to that. So hold on. Well, that didn't appear to help anything. He'll quit knocking in a minute. Speaker is a seven millimeter. That's in and ready to go. So we'll put this back in. Uh, this panel is only held into the door panel by three clips. One here, one here, and one on the front side. All you have to do is squeeze those and pull up and you can get this right out of your door. And to put it back in the door is really just the opposite. You're gonna put all of your electricals through here at the top. And you're just gonna snap this down into place. There you go. See, easy. This small plug, door lock, which you do have to take off. It plugs in right here. And then the only thing left is our window switchy. And really the last trick is just to get this back through this hole, which is really just a matter of fiddling with it. I mean, you can do it one-handed sometimes. Like, bam, look at that. Up and over this lip. Front and back. And then you gotta make sure your clips line up for your door panel. And it should fall right into place, like that. Ta-da. There's one, two, three, and I think a fourth one down here. And those are just the ones we pried off. Again, one, two, one, two, like that. So at the back of your door, where this reflector that looks like it might be a light goes, no, that's actually where that hidden seven millimeter is. That's the one that uh, you gotta be careful of or you will break the door or it or something. And then you'll be mad. T30, both of them. Just pull the door handle out and hold it while you get your screw in there plastic cover. It's got a tang at one end right there that slides in and the other end is like a little plasticky clippy thingy. Yeah, it, it's going to break frequently. There you go. Yep. All right, that's fixed. Uh, windows fixed. The only thing left is this is my neighbor's car and he's got a low tire light on. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill his tires up. That's gonna do it. Um, windows back up, which is nice because it's cold outside. I'm sure he'll be real happy about that. And it wasn't too bad of a job. It's one you could definitely tackle yourself. Just make sure you've got a T30 Torx bit, a uh, seven millimeter screwdriver, and a car that makes noises like that. All right, well, we'll see you next time.